Hey guys, my name is Krista and I am going to go over the e-collar today. So a lot of people don't understand the e-collar, don't know what the e-collar is, or they straight up just say, are you shocking your dog? So we're gonna go over the functions, how I specifically use the e-collar for all my clients, and then also what is an e-collar. So basically I like to start off just explaining that an e-collar is like a TENS unit. It has the functions of a TENS unit in a sense of, it's like a muscle stimulator. So it goes from zero to 100, 100 being the highest. It has a vibrate and tone setting on the T button. And it also has a plus five setting, which could be also the red button or momentary and continuous. So momentary and continuous, when you explain it, is continuous is just holding it in. Momentary is like a tapping sensation. Um, you control all of this. So when training, it is like, hi, get over here, kind of mentality in a sense of like, you can, yes, use it as a correction tool, but also you are going to be using it as like an invisible leash or a communication device in a sense of, hey buddy, it's okay, or please, down, sit, the same exact thing. I actually love the e-collar for the simple fact of you have so much more you can do with it. Every time I get with a client and we just start doing the e-collar right away, day one, the results are fantastic. Things go so much faster, so much smoother. You're able to really hone in on the little stuff and make sure that you're holding your dog accountable so much easier rather than, you know, walking over and having to use a pet corrector, for instance, as a, a correction device or um, leash guidance 24 seven, you're really able to get off leash, which means also inside or outside communication so much faster. So a lot of people are like, well, I don't wanna do the e-collar because I'm not looking to go off leash with my dogs. Off leash doesn't just mean outside. Off-leash reliability means inside. Can you call your dog over to say place and um, to ask them to hold a downstay to, you know, can you tell your dog to get off the counter um, and really make it mean something to your dog so that they're safe, you're safe, everyone's safe. So that is why I love the e-collar. That's kind of a background of the e-collar. It's like a muscle stimulator. We actually, when I actually show you how I use the e-collar, I actually can't feel their levels, which is typically around their working levels, um, zero to 10. Uh, I can't feel the remote collar until about a 20 or 25, which for some typical dogs uh, during learning stages, that's um, somewhat of a good correction or you know a higher tone in a sense where hey, no, we're not gonna do that. And if a dog needs something higher, then we'll do that. The dog will let you know when the proper correction has been made. And I believe that a proper correction can be made specifically with an e-collar so much easier and more effective than anything else. And a lot of people are having some really troublesome behaviors where you know, jumping on the table, jumping on the counter, jumping on people, and the correction can be really understood with an e-collar. So I use mini educators, um, dog trus, garments. I specifically love the mini educator just for the simple fact of zero to 100. Uh, you have great uh, range of numbers that you can work with with all types of dogs. Um, and you don't necessarily have to think I have to go higher with a bigger dog. Some of the smallest dogs I've ever had have been the highest on a knee collar. And again, your dog is going to let you know which number is best. And I will actually go over how to begin the e collar with the dog um, in another video, but today we're just gonna go over the functionality, how I specifically use it and everything like that. So we'll get started. Okay, so to begin, I have my dog Oscar's remote collar. Uh, it's been a game changer for us. He's deaf. You can't imagine having a deaf dog and trying to fix behavioral issues without an e-collar. <laughs> um, so starting off with the e-collar, you have the remote and the collar. 
obviously. So when looking at it, you also will have two stems. I actually have a comfort pad on mine uh, just because my dog is white, he's a little more sensitive, has thinner fur on his neck, and the comfort pad works fantastic. So getting started, you're going to turn on the remote and the collar. So you are going to see these two red dots putting them together. So now we have connected the two red dots and we've turned on just the collar. So once we turn on the collar, you're gonna see a blinking green light or you're gonna see a blinking reddish orange light. Reddish orange light means that it's dying, <laughs> obviously. So another thing would be green light, charged. So great, it's charged. So charge time, it takes about 90 minutes for a full charge uh, and everything like that. So that's perfect. Um, it's pretty fast. I always tell my clients just charge the remote at night unless you're having issues within the crate just because behavioral issues, dogs should be sleeping in a crate at night. Um, next thing would be turning on the remote now. You're going to see this on off button in the back. It says on off and L. So you're going to, because there's also a light function on here, you are going to hold it in for two seconds and then you're going to see a light turn on so it's going to be on 1d mc you also can get two dog systems where it's um two dog m0c so uh, the remote always turns on when you get it out of the box typically on a zero um if it's on another number it's just was scrolled or something like that um no big deal scroll down to zero and we can continue all right so when you get the remote it's going to be on one dog which is 1d M, which is momentary, zero, and C. I do not use the functions like this. Reason being is I like the plus five function, uh, and I'll explain why, and it's everyone does it, their training differently. It's just the way I do it. Um, and I've done it, I've gone to other places and did the remote like they do it, and I like it that way. It's just that for me and my clients, I find it best to be used this way, and this is how I use it personally. So I always just, want to use it the way I do just for the fact that I know it works um, and it, it works it's the same function as any other place I just think that when doing it I can create a moment just by tapping also so uh, it's not a big deal so we're gonna go over that so again you're gonna see one dog M zero C I turn off the M function and if you can look you there's an MC you're going to tap it twice and now you see one dog zero C on the remote. Once you see one dog zero C, then we can start to go over how I use it. Okay, so for instance, I like this setting vibrate on. I think vibrate comes pretty effective. Uh, tone, you can see some effectiveness with it, but I really like vibrate. I use it a lot, um, especially because vibrate can be a setting where it actually freaks a dog out a little more. So, um, for certain things, you could, you know, deter them to do certain things. But again, I don't rely on vibrate. I just keep it set to it. It comes already preset as vibrate. You can preset it to tone uh, by changing it. You can look at the mini educators uh, YouTube video on how to change that. Or you can contact me and I certainly can um, explain it to you really quick. So T for tone comes set as vibrate mini educator. I'm calling you out. I don't know why it comes that way, but it's not a big deal because it makes my life easier. Um, but uh, then you have two S buttons. So the black S button and the red S button. So the way I use the remote is, so say I have it on, you know, my typical dog's working level ranging between a zero to 10. Uh, so I set it on five. So say I'm using the scroll. This is the scroll. You can go to zero and one high, which is 100. This is how you're gonna move it around so I am setting it at five I can create continuous so I'm holding it down it has a 10 second shut off and by creating continuous I'm typically just teaching commands sit they complete the command pressure comes off down complete the command pressure comes off place complete the command pressure comes off come complete the command, pressure comes off. So this is where we really start with the 
uh, pressure and release, especially even with a prong collar. So if you're even thinking uh, similarity with a prong collar and then e-collar, day one of a board and train, I am prong collar, e-collar, pressure on, pressure off. We're really getting down to it. Start to get the prong out. We're layering in more e-collar stuff. Um, that's how we get that off leash re reliability. Uh, and then, uh, then, okay, so if we want to create a moment, no, it's just by tapping it on that working level. And typically, uh, that's going to be a lot for reminders, uh, and stuff like that. So getting into reminders and why I use, I turn momentary off just cause I can create it myself. I always have the owners get really into it. I will change it up if it is a little harder for them to do momentary and continuous, um, scrolling wise and stuff like that. But the reason I like using the red button is because it comes preset to plus five and you can re preset your remote, uh, to plus 60 if you wanted to, um, wherever you are. I mean, that's really easy to preset. Again, Mini Educator has a video on that. Uh, and the reason I like mine set at plus five is because I like the plus five for reminders. It's subtle. It's easier on the dogs I see. Of course, some dogs, you know, that are reactive and you need to go a little higher for punishment. We're doing that job. Typically the trainers in board and trains or in private lessons, I'm there working them through it, or I will handle the dog, um, get them to a better mindset. And then, uh, we go from there. But the reason I like this is some dogs, uh, that are subtly a little pushy, not too much. This works great. Um, in a sense where I could be place, no place. And that's why I like that setting is because I can give a subtle correction with the plus five. I really like my owners to be able to really be able to scroll, get used to scrolling, um, and s stuff like that. Uh, but that's really how I set the remote up, why I use the remote like that. And again, vibrate. This is a normal dog's working level. Don't feel much. And then this would be like my reminder, like, Hey, I'm over here. You don't need to look over that way. And it all comes down to also timing and certain things like that. So when you see a lot of owners having to go, you know, pretty high and missing the moment, it's it's really about the moment also. Um, and I just, I'm gonna create a video on that then. Uh, I'm training to why Weimer Rhymers. One is a little reactive and the other one's a puppy. Um, but it's all about that moment uh, and everything like that. So yeah, so this is how I set up the remote. I love using the remote like that. Uh, I like being able to create a moment, being able to create continuous. And I also like having that plus five just because I see that it works a ton with my clients and uh, they enjoy having that function and being able to change it up on numbers where they don't have to scroll as much. They kind of know what the correction is going to be um, and where they're going to be at, but they also have the capabilities to scroll and do what they want, but also have the click of the button too. Uh, to hold their dog accountable. Um, and then uh, you can change that number up every other day if you needed to, it's that simple. Um, another thing that I like to go over is locking the number in, not a fan. So when you say you're at a random number, you hold this down, you are locking that number in. So I'm at 11, I cannot scroll. All I can do is hit the buttons, and that's it. I cannot, I cannot get, get off of that number. So one of the things I like to tell my owners is do not do that. Do not use that function. Do not. Um, it, it's very rare that you're going to just randomly hit the button. And if you do, do not make it a big deal. It's okay. Do not coddle your dog. It's a mistake. It's just like, you know, your parents stepping on your toe. It's not something that you need to make a big deal about. So to get that setting off, if you see that happens to you, hold it down and now you're off and you can scroll all you want. So that's how I set up the remote collar. That's how I like to do it. If you have any questions, please ask me if you would like to get started on remote collar training, please contact me. I will put my form below in a comment where you can uh, fill it out, get in contact with me. We're in contact within three days and we review it, we'll do a phone consultation, and then uh, we all, we'll get in touch with you to see what we can set up, dates we have, everything like that. Uh, we have some big things coming June 1st, 
and then uh, you'll see a website, everything, and